So I've been wanting to make a handheld computer, you know, Game Boy, PSP kind of a thing for a long time. And I finally found a kind of relatively inexpensive way. Um, basically, you can get laptop motherboards for pretty cheap on eBay, like used ones. So um, this is my adventure with that. First, I'm going to throw together a battery uh, from old cells that I had lying around. So you take your cells and your cell holders and you put them together uh, kind of like flip-flops so that uh, it's easier to get them in the 7S configuration and so then we just have to go connect these two and then connect down here and then connect these two and then connect down here and so on and then we gotta add the BMS. I'm adding small st strips of tape because these parts like to fray and if this part frays then it shorts because that's connected to the negative side. So yeah. Always check your batteries before you put them in the battery pack. I just made that mistake. These three had zero volts across them which I don't even know how that's possible but yep. Okay so I wired up the battery uh, BMS. So here's that. Um, one of the cables goes to, so this one's P, so this one I believe goes to the load. Um, this one's C minus, so it goes to the charge, and this one's B minus, goes to the battery. And so, yeah, and then on the plus side, I got this and I split it out into two. And so one of the pluses will go off with um, the load, and these will go to the battery, sorry, to the laptop motherboard and then the other plus will go off with the charge into the one of the regulators and I guess this one technically also goes to the regulator um, one before it goes to the motherboard um, one of them will go to regulator uh, in so that like for example 5 volts can get regulated into 25 volts um, to charge this thing and then one of them will go out so that whatever voltage this is it in between you know 18 and 24 um, it'll get regulated down to uh, 20 so that the laptop is happy. It looks like the regulators are constantly using power because they have a really bright LED right here. Um, so just in case I'm going to add a latching switch. So I've got the battery connected through the regulator going into the laptop and let's see if it's strong enough to turn it on. So step one, switch. All right, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a light on. It's making high-pitched noises. And it's on. All right. Okay, if you can't see that, it says checking media, and then it's basically restarting over and over, and that is connected to this thing, and that guy, at first it wasn't working, but that's because I, I accidentally current limited it, so yeah, it's only doing uh, 0.8 amps, so that seems to be fine, it's kind of cool, powering through, you know, breadboard cables. So yeah, I guess the next step is to get Windows onto one of these USB drives, and We'll go from there. Okay, so I've got the Windows install USB and I'm drawing about 9 watts or half an amp and it's running. So let's get this installed. So I was getting this error right here uh, during installation. So I made a couple changes. Uh, one, I changed, I made a partition that's only 120 something gigs. Um, two, I changed my SD um, USB drive, make sure that one's not corrupted or something. And three, I took some RAM from my motherboard, from my other laptop, and plugged it in here, see if that's the issue. Um, and then, yeah, I noticed that the heat pipe was getting kind of hot, so I just got to lay this thing on there, and if it gets hot, I just hit it with a fan. That seems to work pretty well. Let's see if this works. 
All right, so that worked. So um, I guess the next thing is I've got a screen which I'd like to use for this. And I have a fan, which I think to be lazy, I'll probably connect this to a USB side and then that way I can connect it to a hub that's gonna be in this device. And then the fan will just be blowing into the regular um, heat dump of the system. And then I won't have this thing sticking out, especially because this is where the batteries are gonna ideally lay on this way. And then I guess I gotta start designing the case for it. So here are the two, the front side and the back side of the case. Um, it turned out a little janky in some parts. <laughs> Actually, it turned out very janky. Um, mostly because the, the 3D printer I'm using is kind of like a hand-me-down and um, the corners don't work well, they uh, start to peel. But, um, you know, this is just the first prototype and um, I'm mostly seeing if the thing, if the spaces are correct, like, you know, this one here and this one, if those screws are in the same, the screw posts are in the same, in the right places. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to glue them together. And I think if this works, if this, um, you know, if things are in, you know, approximately the right place, then I'm just gonna cut it into fourths and then print it that way and that should, uh, that should be fine. But uh, other than that, it came out pretty close. All right, so I've got everything I need to start Legoing this together. I've got, I guess I have to figure out the screen, but I have the motherboard and the hard drive and the battery pack and the fan and the drill and a bunch of posts. I haven't figured out which posts I need for this yet, but I need, you know, long skinny ones. And then, yeah, the drill, some tape, um, soldering stuff, hot glue, hopefully I won't need that. And then, yeah, the parts. I made a hole for the fan. Um, I made one in the CAD too, but I accidentally printed an old version. So I guess this will work for now. Okay, so I forgot to put some holes in, and some holes need to be expanded, but uh, all this can be fixed in the next version. Um, yeah, and then, so now I am working on, so I've got the screen and the battery go in the front case, and then the motherboard goes in the back case, and then that way it makes everything modular and easy to switch, switch around and plan for. Um, I just finished soldering in the, po the positive, from this uh, regulator. Now I need to solder in the negative, maybe add some tape so things don't move around, although it's, it's pretty sol solidly in there. And yeah, then we'll be ready to test it out. So the fan's a little louder than I was hoping. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but the plus side is, is uh, it's a pretty small fan, but it seems to be keeping the CPU pretty cool, so that's good. Uh, the other issue though is that I did put it on the wrong side. I meant to put it up here, but I guess I, I flipped the screen, put the screen in the wrong place. So uh, that needs to be fixed in the next version. So the system has uh, seven of these uh, 26700 batteries in it, and each battery ha um, holds 12.8 watt hours. Now, my computer is using up at most, let's say, 30. Uh, watts, and so uh, 7 times 12, let's say, is uh, 84, and then divided by 30 is about 3 hours, um, and that's uh, with everything pumping at full speed. So I expect, you know, closer to 4, 4 to 6 hours. We'll see. Alright, well... To go along with the wish.com system, we got wish.com doom. Uh, even on lowest settings, it's a little on the unplayable side. But, uh... It's interesting. I'm gonna have to see if there's any games with lower, slightly lower settings. Risk of Rain 2 seems to work a bit better. Although I do have to turn, well, I don't know if I had to turn it down to the lower settings, but uh, I did, because the menu was a little slow. But this is definitely playable. 
So yeah, overall it wasn't terrible. Uh, it makes a lot of noise, but that's part of version 2. I need to fix all those things. I've got a long list of, of things to improve. But uh, yeah, overall I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, I guess I'll have the list down below because it's a bit long to just sit here and read all of it. Stay crunchy.